Hi there, my name is Professor Katrina McFerrin. I'm from the University of Melbourne in Australia and I'm very happy to have the opportunity to share some ideas about what I think music therapy research is and how it can be described in all its multiple forms around the world. I want to start by saying that this is clearly one person's perspective but that in Australia we're quite proud of the fact that as you can see on the map we have a perspective on the world which is perhaps unique in really endeavouring to try to understand what is happening in many, many different countries. And uh, I think that this makes it really fascinating for us to talk to other people about what we see as being music therapy research around the world and perhaps relevant in the context of the World Federation of Music Therapy. The World Federation has a definition of music therapy from 2011 in which it describes the professional uses of different forms of music in a range of contexts and for a range of purposes. And it makes reference to the complex cultural webs in which music therapy takes place. Now given that it's very difficult to define music therapy in its practices, you could also imagine that it's somewhat challenging to describe music therapy research. For example, we can think about the different forms of music therapy practices that happen as methods and techniques using English language words, but we can also break the kinds of musicking that we do down into these different continua, from ex using existing music to creating original music, from being predictable to highly emergent, and from the roles that people play being either described as potentially receptive or active. None of those words is uncontested and certainly each of those ideas about what kinds of music therapy practices underpin the profession of music therapy are critical to thinking about research. Indeed, the kinds of participation that uh, are used in music therapy can also be very difficult to describe depending on what's important to those people practicing whether it's the degree of musical and non-musical abilities, a commitment to the physical, emotional or cognitive kinds of goals and whether they should be sustained or momentary outcomes, whether the location should be private and confidential or public and participatory, and also what kinds of dynamics are most important. So if that's what music and music participation comprise when we're talking about music therapy, what most clinicians, music therapists would do is think about how they would evaluate change. And I've just put down four different dominant orientations to thinking about what change might look like in music therapy in the context of evaluation. Are we looking at changes due to the effect of the musical stimuli, for example? Are we looking to change the visibility of the musical participants? Are we attributing meaning to different musical experiences? Or are we thinking about the effectiveness of music for motivation? So having provided just a taste of why I think that it's difficult to explain what music therapy is in leading to music therapy research, I'd also like to acknowledge the web of cultural influences or the sea of culture that we swim in, each one of us, that varies potentially between Eastern and Western, between developing and developing, developed contexts, and also for all of the individuals in each of these constantly emerging uh, countries where multicultural diversity is much more the norm than a singular uh, cultural influence in many countries. So whether or not we choose to use words like caring, a deeply feminine word, or helping, a more masculine word, might be related to gender, amongst other things. And whether we em emphasise individual outcomes or collective outcomes may also vary. And who holds the power? Is it the expertise of the music therapist or the empowerment of people in music therapy? That is most critical. One way that I like to think about music therapy research is a little different from the qualitative and quantitative divisions which marked early discussions on music therapy research and which were very useful. But another way is to think really in terms of these different quadrants 
about what it is that music therapy research is trying to investigate. So in the red box, is it the experience in the moment that's most fascinating for music therapy researchers to investigate? Or is it the effect about, of music therapy as a thing that's most interesting to observe and measure? Should music therapy research really be investigating what difference it has made, the practicing of music therapy? Or being a highly relational discipline, is it related to the ways that relationships change over time? And I've just made an attempt at mapping here some of the most common traditions in music therapy research uh, with mixed methods at the top trying to symbolise this combination of both objective and subjective emphases. Uh, many uh, music therapists in the qualitative domain have used uh, phenomenology as a methodology. Others would talk about phenomenology as a philosophy, and both would be correct. As you can see, ethnography is looking more at group aspects, as is many of our uh, ideas over on this side. And so it goes. So what is music therapy research? Well, one way that we can simplify it is to think about what kind of data do we collect in any case. And using that quadrant idea, we might think about if we're emphasising an individual in our research and what that individual has experienced, then we might want to emphasise collecting data which is self-report of some kind where people describe the experiences that they've had. And those are either collected along with other descriptions or just held uniquely and valued for what they offer our understanding. On the other hand, we might still be interested in the individual, but we want, might want to see what can be observed on the assumption that that will tell us about something which was experienced and also be a more valid, externally held way of seeing change as it occurs. And many researchers would privilege that kind of observable and um, reaction as being evidence that music therapy has been helpful. And of course, the evidence-based traditions are very strong in many of the fields that music therapists work within. On the other hand, if we're more interested in shared experiences, are we then interested in a dialogue where both the researcher and the person who is describing their experience together co-create an understanding of what occurred, sharing their different knowledges in order to be able to develop a richer understanding of a phenomenon? Or would we collect fieldwork where we observe cultures and groups of people in action and use our own interpretations transparently and reflexively to be able to describe uh, theories or understandings about what has happened in music therapy. So in some ways, whether or not it's objectivist or whether or not it's subjective, whether it's co-constructed or whether it is actually determined, can vary quite a lot, even depending on what type of data you've collected. So music therapy research is diverse, just as music therapy practices are diverse. And in a series of interviews following on from this video, we hope to interview many people from all around the world so that they can describe the different research that they have done in their contexts and so that they can share with us what they see research as being, to talk about their underlying beliefs, their epistemology about how knowledge is created and about the methodologies that they've used in order to generate that knowledge which will be interrelated. And of course, at the level of axiology, the values that have really informed the ways that they practice their research. It's so exciting to be able to know how research is conducted and then to be able to appreciate the different ways and the different results that are created. And I hope that some of you will join us in listening to wonderful scholars from all around the world talking about the amazing work they've done over many years of, of dedication and commitment to all of us understanding the practices of music therapy better. Thank you to the World Federation of Music Therapy. This is an exciting opportunity.